What is up, everyone? It's Ricky572 Return Chance. Today is January 2nd, 2023, and this is our first market watch of the new year, 2024. Happy New Year's to everyone. If you guys have any New Year's resolutions or any goals you want to accomplish this year, let me know down below. Mine were kind of the same as last year, you know, more growth and opportunities. Uh, losing weight, I weighed myself at, on January 1st. I'm at, I was at 200 pounds yesterday. So I'm trying to lose like 30 pounds and hopefully that goes well. I'm going to try to be consistent with it, at least like work out five to five times a week and stuff. But yeah, other than that, maybe like top, top YCS or regional or uh, NAWCQ this year because I did get invited. So hopefully I top that, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, let me know down below any of your New Year's resolutions or any goals you want to accomplish. But without further ado, let's get started on the market watch. That's what we're here for. Uh, wanted looks like it's pushing up way higher in price than anyone expected. I thought on release $60 was going to be like the highest this car was going to hit. I was way wrong about that. It looks like the popularity of like Fire Kings getting the new support in February. I think Rescue Ace uses it. Yeah, Rescue Ace does use this as well. Uh, it's pushing this card up way higher, basically doubling it in price. 43 listings on the market. And uh, right now our cheapest listing is at $122. 122.98 and then that's 124 dollars with shipping so new high price point for wanted i would actually sell if you're not going to play like if you, you guys open some age of overlord and if you guys uh pull some of these i would actually sell if you don't plan on using them because i don't see them going any higher than that i think that's way too much for a card that's like i know you play three of these but i think that's way too much for an engine there's like more budget-friendly builds that you could a use other than uh the wanted engine in fire king so that's just my opinion let me know how you guys feel about this car do you guys think this car can go up even higher in price or this the highest price is going to reach uh next card we have is original sinful spoil snake guy another piece of the engine for the wanted engine i mean i mean for the uh, snake guy engine uh, we had this sitting, I know it, on release it was like 2 to $3. I didn't pick them up then, but then it reached like a high price point of like 8 uh, ish 5 dollars uh, Went back down a little bit, but now we have them pushing back up. And again, 71 listings on the market. We are in January, and then uh, next month we do get Phantom Nightmare. So we have, we're like a month away from that support. $7.65, $7.69, $8.30, $8.40, $8.45, and 749 so you do have the option of playing three of these if you don't want to go and buy the wanted uh seeker of central spoils you do have the option of playing three of these instead of running three of those in one of these you have the option of just playing three of these as a budget alternative if you do still want to run the snake eye package but yeah these are up at a new price point i think i could see these run uh going up to like the 10 12 dollar price point because i do see people uh, maybe playing three of these instead of uh, three wanted because wanted is super expensive. So to stay budget, they might uh, go for playing three original sinful spoils snake guys. Um, if you guys have some of these, I would say hold on to them a little bit until we get that new uh, Fire King support, uh, Promethean Princess, and and uh, Phantom Nightmare. And I think they should go up uh, to ten to twelve dollars. I might pick some up. Uh, in case I decide to play the Snake Eye engine. Right now I'm running a Tri Brigade Fire King Dogmatical build, which I am going to do a deck profile on this week. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, Original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye is going back up in price. Uh, so I was going through my uh, folder and inventory. I noticed that Inferno Break was going up in price. I'm still not done with going through inventory. So I got like three more folders to go through. And then I got like bulk folders I got to look at because always check your bulk. You never know what you're going to find. Uh, Inferno break for the super rare. Uh, we know that Inferno Archfiend did come off the limited list and now is at three. So we might see a little bit more Inferno players try to play. I'm an Inferno player, but I haven't uh, looked at any list. I know I saw a Horus Inferno build, but Horus is kind of expensive at the moment. So I might just put off playing Inferno for the moment. But these were at $1.60 uh, before uh, Inferno Archfiend got uh, unlimited. Now we have them pushing up 17 listings. We have 124 for our first near mint, only one copy available, and then 238. Then after that, we hit 341, 344, 348, 398, and 399. So almost pushing up to the $5 price point. Uh, in my build, I only play one of these, so maybe others might just pick up one of these as well. So it's not too bad to pick up for like a, a one of 
three to four dollars for a super rare from Astro Pack. I don't think it's too much, but they might come down in price because it is just hype pushing it up at the moment since uh, Infernity Archfiend did get unlimited. But for my budget players, we do have commons under a dollar if you guys don't want to go for the super rare. Uh, Marinza's Dive I talked about last year. I think I said it was a good pickup uh, at five-ish dollars. Uh, we have it kind of going back up. I know it came down for a little bit uh, to the $3 price point, but we have it reached going back up again. We have it at 76 listings, 425, 430, 430, 399, $4, 420. That's basically $5.99 shipping, 520 and 533. I still think this card is a good pickup. We do have some water support coming out this year. And um, I think Marin says might benefit from that. It's just speculation, though. It's just my player brain that I play Marin says, and I'm probably being biased about this. But I feel like Marin says has potential to be a meta contender once that new water support comes out. And I feel like this card could reach a high price point again of like $15. Because when it first released, it was like a $13 to $15 card. So I feel like this card could go back up again. But that's just my opinion. Let me know how you guys feel down in the comments below. Is it a good pickup or should I get rid of these? Uh, Shadow's Light is a card from Battles of Legend Monsters Revenge that people kind of uh, probably forgot about or overlooked since people are focusing on duality. But this card used to be like around 50-ish cents. I actually bought like I think 30 copies of these for like a quarter or something each. And right now they're at 150 listings. We have them already at a dollar and three cents, a dollar twenty nine, a dollar thirty three, a dollar forty, a dollar forty five, a dollar forty five, and a dollar fifty four. So it kind of does the same thing as duality, except it's not a quick play. It says target one dark monster you control, special summon one light monster from your deck or extra deck with the same original type and level. You can banish this card from graveyard during main phase this turn. You can normal summon one light or dark monster in addition to your normal summon or set. Uh, you can only gain this effect once per turn. You can only use each of the effects of Shadow's Light once per turn. You cannot conduct your battle phase turn. You activate either of these effects. So it kind of does the same thing as Duality in a way. Uh, so it might be one of those cards you might want to keep your eye out on or pick up before it starts going up even further in price. Uh, they're under like $2. So $6, $5 for places isn't too bad. I feel like this card could reach a $5 price point someday. Uh, the Hidden City, another card I looked at when I was looking through my folder. So we have Super Rares and Secret Rares. I noticed they are kind of low on listings. 35 listings on the market. This is from Fist of the Gadget. And the graph shows that they did start to go up. They were around like 3 to 4 dollars. Right now we have them at 365 374 375 375 375 uh, then once these under four dollar copies are gone, they hit 495 and 498. So slowly making its way to a five dollar card. I'm not sure if maybe sub terrors are gonna come back or something. Uh, we don't know the form what the format, uh, what the best decks of the format are gonna be yet. I mean, people are anticipating it's gonna be Fire Kings, but maybe sub terrors. There's a sub terror build out there that I don't know about that's making this card go up in price. Let's take a look at the secret right now. We have the Seeker Rare from Dark Illusion at 56 listings. And it looks like this one's kind of been steady over the past couple months. Take a look at the month graph. Yeah, it's been pretty steady. So these are at four, five. No, that's heavily, heavily. We hit our first lightly played at 598, 599, 599, $5, and $5. So a $5 card for the Seeker Rare. Uh, I'm not sure which one I would pick up. I'll, I only have a playset because I bought a little collection and it came included in there. But it just surprised me that they, they did start go up to go up for the super rares. Let me know down below if you guys have any idea why uh, the Hidden City is going up. Grace Keeper's Encryption. I know I talked about this card a couple months back. I said it was a good card to go against tier element. Uh, I was running it in Vanquish Soul for a while, but I didn't really like it because I would have to draw into it. And if I don't draw into it, then I can't use it. Uh, if I were to draw into it later on during that turn, it says at the start of your main phase one, apply one of these following effects until the end of your opponent's turn. Neither player can activate this activate cards effects in a graveyard. Neither player can banish cards from the graveyard. Neither player can spell summon monster from the graveyard. So I think this is maybe uh, being looked at as a tech to go against Fire King this upcoming format. Uh, we do have it going up in price. It was at a high price point a couple months back of like, 
uh, eight ish dollars, then uh, it came back down to like the four ish dollar price point. And right now we have it heading back uh, 51 listings. We have it at 750, 859, 870, 895, 898, uh, nine dollars, 935, and that's basically 943 with shipping. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about Gravekeeper's encryption. Honestly, after testing it out, I didn't really like it. I actually chose to go for another card that's kind of similar to it, except it doesn't stop uh, monsters from being summoned from the graveyard, and it doesn't stop uh, cards from being banished. It just stops like graveyard effects. Uh, so the card is called Silent Graveyard. I guess this is the budget alternative. If, if you can't afford the Gravekeeper's encryption, since it's like $8, you have this as well to fall back on. It's an ultra rare from Dual Devastator and it has a common from the LTS Tournament Pack 9. Uh, it kind of does the same thing. I feel like it could shut off Fire Kings as well. It says discard one card. Effects that activate in graveyard this turn are negated. So simple as that. They're under a dollar. So I feel like this card is more useful since it's a quick play as well. You could use it uh, offensively and defensively. Uh, so I think this is something you might want to look at instead of Gravekeeper's Encryption. I just didn't like how the card performed. I was hyping it up a couple months back because I thought it was really good, but after testing it out, it wasn't that good for me. But let me know down in the comments below how you guys feel about Gravekeeper's Encryption. We have Infernity Launcher also. I think the Ultra is the one that's getting kind of low on listings. So yeah, it's 24 listings for the Ultra Rare. And like I said, Infernity Archfiend did come off the list. So I was looking at different Infernity cards last night and noticed this one was starting to go up. They were under $2. And right now we have our listing starting at $389, $394, $399, $399, $4, $4, and $4, $437 on the first page. So they basically doubled in price. They were sitting around like under $2. So uh, if you guys have, have some of these, you might want to go check your bulk. I Did I have some in bulk? I didn't find some in bulk. But yeah, you might want to go check your bulk maybe and get like $4 for, for these if you can. Use them as trade bait if you go to locals. We have the super rares at 79 listings. This is from Shining Darkness. Uh, these don't look like they've been moving. Let's take a look at the month graph. Yeah, it looks like these haven't been moving too much. But these are at uh, 188 for our first near mint listing. Let's look at near mint and lightly played. Uh, 188, 281, 283, 285, 289, 289, and 297. They're like at $3. I, I would just go for the ultra rare since it's the higher rarity technically. And it looks much better if you guys are planning to pick up an Infernity Launcher. It's limited, so you only need one of these. I wish this card were to get un uh, unlimited instead of uh, Infernity Archfiend. I think if this one were to come back, Infernities would have more potential to be like a roguish option to play. Uh, Axis Code Talker, we talked about a couple market watches ago. It looks like it did start to push up even higher. We have a, the premium gold rare now reaching like the $40 price point. I actually sold mine uh, around like $43 last night because I noticed that I wasn't using Axis Code Talker in any of my builds. So I just decided to get rid of it. I feel like maybe it might come as a reprint in Battles of Legend in February in the reprint set, chapter one, I think that's what it's called. Uh, so I just got rid of it. I'm not using it at the moment, so I might as well cash in while I still can. But it looks like it is above the $40 price point. Then we have the Seeker Rare from Battles of the Legend, Crystal's Revenge. This one is currently at like 45, 45, 46, 47, 10, 49, heading up to the $50 price point. If you guys pick these up when they release around like $20 and held on to them, I think now would be a good time to sell. Uh, we have the attorney code ones at 40 listings. These are at 5198, 5198, 52 dollars, 53 heading up to 5570. I think I would just rather pick up if I were to pick up an X code at the moment. I would go for the attorney code one, since the battles of legend run battles of legend one is also reaching the 50 dollar price point. I would go for the original print rather than the reprint since I think this one might hold its value a bit more than this one if it were to get reprinted. I don't know if it's going to get reprinted. Let me know down below if you guys think Axis Code might be in that set. Uh, did I talk about Zeus last week? No, I talked about um, number 90, the Galaxy Photon, the rank 8. But Zeus is getting a reprint uh, this later on this month in the Dual Structured Starter Deck. 
uh, and it is coming in there. So if you guys haven't sold your Zeus, I would sell now before uh, they go lower in price. Right now we have the Ultra sitting at like 15 ish dollars. Looks like some people already started fire selling. $15, $16.89, $15.95, $17.43. $17.49, it's so almost an $18 card. Secret Rares from Battle of the Legend. We have these at $18.80, and they look like they're starting to bounce back up. Why is it bouncing back up? We have a reprint coming. $18.98, and $18, $18, $19 with shipping on the first page. And then the original Secret Rare from Phantom Rage is at $17.98. $18.99, $20, $21.85, $22.77, $20, $20, $20, So if you guys are still holding on to Zeus, I feel like these are going to drop down in price the closer we get to that structured starter deck, dual starter deck. Uh, so I would recommend just selling these off. But let me know down below if you guys disagree that uh, you guys shouldn't sell them at the moment. I completely forgot that there's a new Dark World Fusion coming out in um, Maze of Millennia. And so that made me go look at Dark Corridor because I know Dark Corridor is like the new uh, three of that they play in the Dark World deck. We had this sitting around like 12-ish dollars. I know it got hyped up a couple months back, but then people kind of forgot about Dark World and then started to go down. It hit a low price point of like 11-ish -ish dollars. Right now, it looks like people are starting to pick it back up since pe more people heard about that uh, Dark World Fusion monster that's coming out in Maze of Millennia. We're only like two weeks away from it. Uh, so people are preparing for that. $16.96, $17.97, $17.98, $18.82, and hitting the $20 price point, basically $19.75. So uh, if you guys haven't picked these up, I'm not sure what to say because I sold, sold them a while back around like $15, $16. Dark World is one of those decks that if you let it go off, it could just like completely get rid of your hand and build a board on top of that. Uh, so unless you have like draw or something to go against Dark Road, it's going to be hard to go against them. Let me know down below if you guys are prepared for Dark Road or something or if it's a deck that we might need to look out for this format. Uh, Scrap Recycler. So Orcus did uh, get Harpoor back and I know Scrap Recycler is used as part of the engine to get the Orcus uh, engine started. So we have 33 listings on a super rare from Fist of the Gadgets. This is the highest rarity uh, scrap recycler we have other than that we have comments and then we have rares as well let's take a look at how it's doing we have 33 listings for this card this one was sitting around like a dollar 60 and right now we have it at see near mint at 280 285 289 289 uh 339 on the first page so it's starting to head up to the, almost a four dollar price point I think you use three of these in the deck because it is a starter. But if I'm wrong about that, let me know down below how many scrap recyclers you guys use in the Orcus build. Uh, but for my budget players, you do have uh, under like 25 cent copies available. You guys don't have to go for super rares. Uh, we have Absolute King Blackjack that caught my attention because I saw that a Labyrinth build uh, last year was running it and it topped with it. Uh, we have the Prismatic gold rare i think it's called goat seeker rare. no it's got, called goat seeker rare my bad uh so this one looks like it started to go up in price they were sitting under a dollar right now we have them at 36 listings and it looks like we don't hit a lightly played until we hit 294 297 299 then on the second page we have some at three dollars 399 uh, that's basically three something 445 469 so slowly making its way up to the five dollar mark you do have different options available if you're a budget player though you guys don't have to go for that higher rarity but it's one of those cards that you might want to keep your eye on since labyrinth is anticipated to be one of the uh, better decks of the format since they didn't get hit in uh on the ban list but we do have comments, like I said, comments, 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 and rares available from Tactical Masters if you do want to test out Absolute King Blackjack. And the last two cards on today's Market Watch are going to be Majestus cards. So we have Zarawa the Majestus Flame, and we have Zarawa the, the Majestus Conflagrant Cal Calamity. So we're going to be starting off with Zarawa the Majestus Flame. It looks like it started to bounce back up in price. It was sitting around like $3.50, $3.60 at the beginning of December. 
now we have it at 37 listings and it started to push it back up to seven dollars 70 75 we have a cheap listing right here at 556 then 676 676 792 794 and 75 795 so making its way up to the eight dollar price point i think that's because we technically didn't get announced that we have more majestic support but we did get announced that majestic and invoked uh, might be uh, might be getting a lower continuation so maybe people are anticipating that we might get more support for them uh this year but it's not confirmed yet that we're getting new support it's just uh some post that was made that the lore is going to be continuing or something like that so do what you want with that information but these are heading up in price i forgot what deck was using this i think a infernoble deck like months back last year was running zaro as a tech correct me if i'm wrong but uh yeah zaro the majestus flame going up in price and it looks like zaro the majestus conflagrant calamity is also pushing up in price i remember picking these up for like a quarter i bought like 20 something copies of these but it looks like now we have them at a dollar 39 a dollar 39 a dollar 45 a dollar 49 a dollar 50 a dollar 89 and a dollar 96 so not too expensive but it did go up from like its quarter price point and we have the let's see at it 74 listings this card says if this card is synchro summon you can equip one majestic monster from your extra deck to this card your opponent cannot, your opponent cannot activate the effects of monster with the same card type fusion synchro exceed or link as a majestic monster card in your spell and trap trap zone if this card is sent to the graveyard you can target one majestic card you control destroy it and if you do spell summon this card so yeah, it, it, I know the Majestic strategy isn't that popular, but this card looks like it's pretty good since it looks like it negates uh, Fusion, Synchro, Exceed, or Links. Maybe if Majestic gets like an easier way to uh, bring this out and attach these Fusion monsters, I mean these Majestic Fusion, Synchro, Exceed, or Link monsters to this card, this card could be broken. Uh, but yeah, it's still kind of cheap at the moment. I would say maybe pick at least one copy up just to have in case you do plan playing Majestus if they do get more support. Because uh, I could see this card maybe pushing up to $5 if it were to get uh, some support that could like turbo this out and makes it easier to attach these uh, monsters to it. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's Market Watch. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, go follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and X at Return of Chance. This is Ricky572, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.